alaikum everyone Ramadan Kareem to all of you this is Dr. Qusay uh, Faisal with you uh, I'm going to follow you with the, with the rest of the microprocessor lecture actually before I start with the microprocessor lecture please follow me with the handout sheet which you already have it which I, I give it to you for more understanding to the lecture uh, before I start with the lecture, let me do a quick revision and overview to all what I explained before for the microprocessor. Uh, I started with a uh, flip-flop uh, in the microprocessor uh, in, uh, in order to understand about counter and explain the counter. Then after that, we went through the registers and we say that the registers are number of flip-flops grouped together uh, where flip -flo uh, where it used for storage then we went through the uh, register types uh, we explained the register types all the register types then after that we started with the microprocessor so first of all we uh, uh, explained the bus and we went through the three buses uh, as you see in your handout sheet there is address pass, data pass and control pass then after that uh, we went through how to calculate the microprocessor speed the speed of microprocessor after that I explained the two types of uh, microprocessor as I mentioned to you, there are um, synchronous microprocessor. Uh, we said that's like Intel 8086. That's one of the example. Another example we said Motorola M68HC11. So that was example for synchronous microprocessor. After that, we went for. Uh, I explained the other type of microprocessor. I said that was asynchronous microprocessor. Uh, so that was the synchronous microprocessor that was a synchronous microprocessor and we see that example for that Motorola M68000 uh, of course all the diagram all the uh, the movement of the uh, timing it was explained during the lecture and we said that uh, this microprocessor we call it uh, hand, uh, full handshake operation or we name it master slave operation as well where the master is the microprocessor and the slave it would be the memory after that uh, we went through the memory, memory subsystem design if you follow your hand sheet, handout sheet okay, which you already have um, and in that lecture we saw how the buses connection between the uh, memo uh, the memory and the uh, and the uh, and the microprocessor we say that the, uh, the buses address pass the data pass and uh, the control pass or logic co uh, control logic which is we call it control pass okay uh, we said that there is a chip select output enable write enable output enable we call it also read enable we call it sometimes read enable or output enable the chip select will allow either the memory either write write we or read which is output enable cannot be read and write at the same time and after that we also explained I, actually i went also explained in the lecture the sram read cycle timing diagram also the time diagram for SRAM is explained in the lecture and uh, after that we explained the write cycle as well the SRAM write cycle also it has been explained during the lecture then we went for EPROM okay uh, also we said that the EPROM we explained the read cycle for EPROM and there is no write cycle for um, as, uh, okay, if this is the EPROM read cycle timing diagram. As you know, and as I explained in the lecture, for there is no write cycle for EPROM. Uh, room, it have only read. 
we cannot write on this one uh, then after that was um, the last lecture uh, we went through uh, before before this lecture now in this lecture we are going to um, see how the interface between the RAM room with the microprocessor we are going to go to the a new uh, topic shows the interface when we connect see here this is the microprocessor how we connect the microprocessor with the memory so we have two memories one and two it's possible to have uh, four memories to have a, a faster a process uh, uh, lighter but we will not go for four memories it's possible to have also eight memories but we will not go for four memories eight memories I'm saving that for the um, next year we are going to go just quick uh, overview you know we are not going to go in details but the main things is you understand about how to connect the microprocessor to two memories so that's that's enough for um, uh, microprocessor if you understand if you get the idea of this one so it's possible in the future if you interested to go for four memories or eight memories to simplify this interface between the microprocessor and memory for you I did some small um, uh, drawing uh, uh, please follow me with this uh, drawing how we are going to connect this one to uh, to the microprocessor these two memories to the microprocessor uh, so uh, the microprocessor have um, uh, 20, uh, have a 23 addresses so it have a from a1 to a13 on the top then it have from a4 to a23 so it have total of 23 addresses we are going to talk about it uh, in process to talk about it later on and it have 15 data paths so for addresses it have the microprocessor have 23 addresses 15 data data paths and it, it have for control pass it have something uh, called address drop read write it have something called let, lower uh, upper data uh, data strop lower data strop and the microprocessor have something called data acknowledgement that's for asynchronous microprocessor i'm talking about asynchronous microprocessor i will go to talk about the synchronous microprocessor after that now uh, for 23 addresses we have we have the address from address a1 to a13 that it will goes to both memories uh, even memory and odd memory so thus I'm going to, ex to explain the simple example about two memory only okay even memory and odd memory so one of them could be RAM another one could be room okay so uh, if you see here from A1 to A13, actually it, there are 13 addresses. It will go to uh, uh, address pass from A0 to A12. If you see A0 to A12 actually is also 13 addresses, same like here. But in memory, they write it from A0 to A12. But in the microprocessor, they write it from A1 to A13. So it will go to both memories, even one and odd one then the data pass actually the data pass it will be split for the microprocessor there is upper data pass and lower data pass the upper data pass so the lower one is the small one from d0 to d7 this is the small one lower one so it will go to lower memory see here this is will goes to data pass for lower memory uh, the upper one so from d8 to D15, this is upper one, it will go to upper memory. Uh, as you remember, the memory, just to remind you, the memory it have address pass, data pass, and control pass. And that's how we are going to follow. So the address pass, the, the, there are two, two memory for interface. So this is uh, address pass, data pass, and control pass. So I explain for address pass now. The address pass uh, from A1 to A13, it will go to A0 to A12. Now it comes to data pass. I said there is lower data pass from D0 to D7. It will go to odd memory, the lower data pass. 
from D8 to D15, it will go to upper data pass. Then we come to controller. The controller, as we mentioned here, if you remember, this, this is the logic controller. It have chip select and it have output enable or read and uh, write. So we get back to this one, this example. So I am going to explain the read and write. Then I'm going to talk about the chip select. So uh, there is address drop for the microprocessor. This address drop, uh, it will go OR gate with write. So RWC here, the W is, there is, you know, uh, on negative, W on negative, so W is activated. So if address drop with OR, sorry, address drop OR write, so it's going to go to write to both memory. It's going to go to write to both memory. However, if it's not right, see here, this is right, and there is no gate. If it's not right, so definitely it goes for reading. So it, the memory is going to read. If it's not right, it's going to read. So that's for uh, read and write. What about the chip select? Actually, there is a chip select who decide uh, whether the memory is reading or writing. For that, uh, a microprocessor have something called upper, upper data strop and lower data strop. Also, there is something uh, called addresses from A14 to A23. Do you remember? We said there is uh, uh, 23 addresses. So from A1 to A13, it went for address pass. And there are another from A14 to A23. These are, it will go to something called address decoder. Now, this address decoder, it goes through OR gate. If it goes with upper data strop, so it will go to even memory. So it will go to chip select of the even memory. So address strop with upper data strop with the address decoder, which is the A14 to A23, the rest of the addresses of microprocessor, it will go through OR gate to even memory of the chip select. Now, if uh, the address drop or the address decoder or, uh, or with uh, L LDS, so if it's LDS, lower data strop, lower data strop, so it will go to odd memory. So that's for the chip select. As we mentioned, this is asynchronous microprocessor. So asynchronous microprocessor is waiting for something we call it data acknowledgement. Now, the chip select from the uh, from the uh, even memory, it will go through AND gate with the chip select with odd memory. So this one, the it AND gate with this one, it will go to something called data acknowledgement generator. So as you see here, so this is this is uh, for the upper data strop and this is for the lower data strop or gate so uh, both of them it goes through and gate so if this one or this one working so as long as there is a chip select working one of the chip select working so the microprocessor would know uh, thus the memory have been received the information so if this chip select or this chip select working so it will go through and get it will make something called data acknowledgement generator and it will goes to the microprocessor to acknowledge that hey the memory has been received the information the chip select received the information the memories have been received the information and that's it for the asynchronous interface uh, with the memories As asynchronous interface for the microprocessor with the memories. See, if we combine all these slides together, we are going to reach to the, uh, you know, all these draws together, we are going to reach to this one. See here, from I1 to I13, this goes to address pass for the first and second memory. This is upper data pass, this is lower data pass to the second memory. These are the read or write for control bus. Read, write, chip select for the first memory, read, write, chip select for the second memory. So, and how it's going to function, as explained already in the drawing. 
Now we are going to uh, escape the topics which is after this, which is full address decoder strategy for M68000 MP. Actually, that's if you want to design uh, um, uh, the uh, the interface if you uh, between the memories and microprocessor. I'm not going to uh, design just. Uh, uh, if you know the interface, the idea of interface, that's enough for me. Uh, we are not going to design the interface. So I am going to escape these topics. These topics is not included, including in your lecture. Also, I am going to escape the other topics, which is partial address decode strategy for uh, M68000. This is not included in your uh, uh, in your in your lectures, I'm not going to explain that. The main thing is you understand the interface, so that's that's fine. So that's how you design full address or partial address for uh, asynchronous microprocessor with memories. I will not include these topics. Uh, the main thing is the interfacing. I'm going to focus on interfacing. Before that, it was interfacing for memory with asynchronous microprocessor. Now what about the memory with synchronous microprocessor? Example for synchronous microprocessor is Motorola 68 HC11. As you see here, the, thus there are two memories. Now here is RAM, here is EPROM or ROM, read-only memory. Uh, all the memory, same like the, uh, the memories before, it have address pass, uh, it have something we, for data pass, so here from, this is D, means data pass, this is for data pass. It have control pass, which is write, OE, and chip select. So that's all memory, so whether uh, synchronous or asynchronous. Now, the difference is for, now here, the synchronous microprocessor, see here, there is a difference in uh, the name and the the you know the address pass data pass are different than the uh, the asynchronous microprocessor see here if you see here now previously in asynchronous microprocessor were written a a z a1 to a13 and here now they have been it have been replaced a with pb and there is no d here it used to be d0 to 7 and d8 to 15 now here there is no d there is something called pc pc0 to pc7 uh, also there is no acknowledgement here do you remember that asynchronous microprocessor required acknowledgement that's why we say the asynchronous if you remember is little bit slow it will not go to the uh, next information unless receive acknowledgement from memory. Now here for um, a synchronous microprocessor does not required uh, uh, does not require acknowledgement. If uh, so, it will send the information and it have certain time. If exceed the certain time, it will goes to send another information or receive another information. It will not wait to make sure that the information have been received. That's why it's very fast. But if the information exceeds the time, so uh, the time limit, so it's going to escape the information. So that's the disadvantage for synchronous uh, micro, uh, microprocessor. Now, regarding the address pass, we have uh, eight addresses from PB0 to PB7. It will go to address pass to both memory, A0 to A12. Then there is another addresses, uh, another eight addresses, actually from PC zero to PC seven. That will go to something called latch. So PC zero to PC seven with address strop, it will go to latch, and after that it will go to address pass. So uh, as you see here, there is addresses pass A zero to A twelve. And this is A0 to A12. So there is 8 addresses from here, 8 addresses from here. So here is 0 to 12. What about the rest of the addresses? The rest of the addresses, okay, it will go to something called address decoder. Now here where the address decoder is. Previously in asynchronous microprocessor, the address decoder or address decoder generator, it will go from 
You remember there is addresses from A13 to A20, A14 to A23. So from A14 to A23, that was in asynchronous. Now this is synchronous. Synchronous. So the, there are some addresses will go to address uh, memories, address uh, through address pass to the memories. The rest of the addresses, see here, this is PP0, this is eight, to PP7, this is 8 addresses, plus 8 addresses, this is 16 addresses. It will go to these addresses, the rest, it will go to addresses decoder. Now, uh, that's for addresses pass. Uh, what about the data pass? Actually, for the data pass, PC0 to PC7, it will go to as a data from 0 to 7. To both memory, D0 to D7, to both memory RAM and EPROM. That's for data pass. Regarding the control pass, you see here there is read, write, uh, sorry, there is write, and this is output enable chip select for both memory. Regarding the chip select, that's very easy. See here, it's much easier than asynchronous. Uh, just the address decoder, what is the left from the addresses we say, this is goes to address decoder. The address decoder, this is straight away to goes to chip select for both memory. So that's for chip select. Uh, regarding the read and write, actually that's coming from the microprocessor. See here, this is read or write and this is E. It will go through NOR gates and that's easy to follow. So it will go to NOR gates and it will go to write to both uh, memories and it will go to the read to both memories. Uh, chip select it will allow you either read or write. As I mentioned, it's not possible to read and write both at the same time. And that was the interfacing memory for Motorola M68HC11, which is synchronous microprocessor with the memory. Now, uh, regarding the next topics, which is uh, uh, address decoding strategy for M68 uh, SC11, I'm going to escape this one. I'm not going to explain it, and that's not including uh, in your uh, lecture, because this is uh, how to design it. The main thing is you understand the interface. If you understand the interface, so you are going to get the general idea how that's going to be how you going to interface the microprocessor with the memories, with RAM or ROM, whether synchronous or asynchronous. So that's the main things. Now, how to design it? Uh, I am going to escape the uh, strategy for uh, design it, for the time read cycle for Motorola M68000. So how, how to calculate the time read cycle? The last topic I am going to include it into your um, lectures the microprocessor lecture the last topic we are going to study about it because it's important we are going to calculate the uh, time it will take the microprocessor uh, as you know this is m68000 so this is asynchronous microprocessor so the time it will take the microprocessor uh, to send information and receive acknowledgement so that's the chip select chip select or chip select enable uh, for the RAM or ROM is going to receive the signal uh, and send acknowledgement. So this is time is very important to count and calculate. So this is very important topics. Um, I am going to explain this one and this is last lecture I am going to include it in your uh, microprocessor lectures. Uh, now this is there is a formula to calculate that. Uh, the microprocessor actually it will take uh, time uh, so there is a number here so uh, we could follow this is the clock pulse you know uh, is something here there is number called six nine this is uh, time pro probability delay so yeah we are going to talk about it and there is time 27 so we have to calculate add all these times now what about these times six nine Tau PDS, Tau PD, Tau CE time chip select enable or chip select uh, output. Um, then uh, 27. How how we could know this one? Actually, there is a sheet for that. It should be given for you. And this sheet is depend about uh, the microprocessor speed, the synchronous microprocessor speed. However, 
the six, seven, nine, and twenty-seven. Uh, it depends. If it's, um, for example, let me say this is uh, for for microprocessor eight megahertz. So if it's six, so the maximum it would be sixty-two. Uh, if it's uh, nine, see what is nine here? Here is nine. For eight megahertz, it would be sixty. Uh, 27 27 for 8 megahertz so it will be 10 so it's various so what about 10 megahertz if the microprocessor 10 megahertz also this is given so this table is very important to be given from this table you would know uh, what is this value uh, uh, for 6 7 uh, 6 9 and 27 what is these values uh, after that, I explain example for that, and this is last example include in your lecture. You could follow the example, and uh, uh, you calculate the requirement is to calculate the uh, or the time it will take for the chip select to uh, to to receive the information from the microprocessor. So the microprocessor could re remove or could could uh, move to the next information, move to give next information. So this is the formula or this is the law you do need to memorize, okay? This is the formula you do need to memorize. Now plus uh, 9 plus tau PD plus TCO plus 27 should be less than 5. Half cycle is 62.5. Why? Because the cycle time here is from here to here is one cycle. So half cycle is this one here. This is half cycle from here here this is half cycle full cycle would be from here to here this is see here full movement full cycle so uh, half cycle so how much it need time it will need five uh, if 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 you, we go to the formula so this is the formula you do need to memorize it then everything is given to you from the sheet depend on what is the microprocessor speed now this is given to you the microprocessor speed how much um, the microprocessor is 8 megahertz so you come, you come back to the sheet and you go you know this is 8 megahertz uh, previously I said it's microsecond sorry all these values in nanosecond all these values are in nanosecond not microsecond is nanoseconds however uh, if you go for 9 how much na how much nanosecond now here it's giving to you 60 from the sheet here you see here so just apply the value Sorry, just apply the value. What is missing to you? Missing for you is TCO. So you put all the non value in one hand and the TCO in the other hand. It should be less than this value. So uh, TCO is for, for the most memory, the maximum access time for the, my, uh, for the memory that can interface with the uh, asynchronous microprocessor uh, M68000. So is uh, now for this example, which is given, it was about 200. So it should be less than 202 nanoseconds. So if it's 202, add more. So it's going to be stuck. So it should be less than 202. So uh, it's about 200 nanoseconds. So 202, if it's reached 202, it's going to be stuck. So the memory should be able to read fast enough, which is less than 200 nanoseconds. Now, what about other topics? The uh, uh, time for read cycle, I'm going to skip this one. As long as you know this example, you know how to apply the information with this formula, you know how to read the table for different microprocessor, uh, for different speed of microprocessor, whether 8, 10, uh, 12.5 megahertz microprocessor, so for different speed, you know how to apply it in this formula. That's enough. So you would know how to uh, do simple calculation for uh, for the uh, time uh, time required for read cycle for Motorola. It would be same for write cycle. So I am going to skip the the other topics for the timing read cycle for the uh, other one. Okay, all these is going to be skipped. I is not included. Now, thank you for listening. I, I wish you uh, good luck and uh, happy uh, evening. Thank you to all. Goodbye.